For the adults, uh, I have two disclaimers before we start. One, I don't know if you paid attention to that first reading. That A reading like that is directed to me, not to you so much. It is a warning to shepherds, and I just wanted to let you know that I read that with a lot of care this week, paid a lot of attention to it. I just don't want you to think that I ignore stuff like that. The second one, this homily for some of you may start off a little rough. Um, but I think it's necessary, and I just want you to know, if it does start off rough for you, please stay with me. It ends on a terrific note. I was wondering if you would be kind enough, be willing, be brave, to think of a, of a serious sin you committed in your past. Maybe it's something, I hope, it's something you have already brought to confession and have been forgiven for, but it might be something you've never told anybody. And if you are thinking of that, I wonder if you could now imagine Jesus walking in and seeing you do whatever it is you've got in your mind. My question is, what do you think Jesus does in that moment? Some people, when I've asked them this question, that what they envision is they envision Jesus looking at them and then turning around and walking out maybe shutting the door if it's in a room. Other people picture Jesus just staring at them with looks of either anger or disgust or maybe disappointment. Some people picture Jesus in that moment looking and then pulling out a little pad of paper and writing it down because he wants to remember what he saw. So if you hold on to that for a moment, as, un, as, as uh, awkward as that image is, I'd like to draw your attention to a word in the gospel, the word pity. It says that when Jesus saw these crowds, these, this vast crowd, that his heart was moved with pity for them. Pity is not a, a popular word in our culture. It's got a very negative connotation. But if you look it up, the Greek that is translated as pity is used a dozen other times in the New Testament. I'd like to share with you three of those because I need you, I would, would hope that you could get a better feel for what Jesus is experiencing, what he's giving to this big crowd of people. It's used in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Many of you know that story, the guy, the story of the guy who comes from Jerusalem down to Jericho and he is robbed and beaten and left for dead. And this Samaritan man sees him. And unlike the other two people in the story, the Samaritan heart, Samaritan's heart is moved with pity, this, this phrase, compassion, if you will. And you know how that played out. The Samaritan took the guy and, and uh, binded up his wounds and took him to an inn, someplace where he could be uh, cared for. It's also used in the parable of the prodigal son, another story that many of you know. And if you remember that story, the young son, he takes his inheritance and goes to a faraway country and wastes the money and finally decides the best thing he can do is come home, try to apologize to his dad, and ask to be treated as a servant. But in the story, as Jesus tells it, the father sees the son coming a long way off. He sees the boy long in the distance. And once again, the story says, the father's heart was moved with pity, with compassion for this boy. And again, you remember how that turned out. The father rushes to the boy. He doesn't even give the boy a chance to finish his apology. He immediately reinstates him as a son, as, as his son. The last story is one that you may not know. Uh, it's a story where Jesus raises a young man from the dead. Jesus is approaching a city called Nain, and just at that moment, a procession, a funeral procession, is coming out of the city. And the, the young man who has died is the only son of his mother, and that mother was herself a widow. 
So she has suffered, if you will, double tragedy in her life. She's lost her husband, and now she's lost her only son. And the story says that when Jesus saw this, his heart was moved with pity, with compassion for this woman. And he goes over and he says to her, don't weep. And then he touches the coffin. They stop. He says to the dead man, arise. And the boy does. And he gives him back to his mother. That is the sense of what Jesus is doing here. He sees the crowd and he has compassion. He has pity, love, mercy. That's what he's expressing. But the most important thing is the fact that Jesus is doing this to the crowd. He's not going to some place where there are very religious people and saying, oh, you, because you are, you know, you do your best and you are righteous, I will offer you my compassion. No, in that whole crowd, much like here, there are people that maybe are doing very well living out their Christian life, and there are other people that are struggling and have all sorts of problems that make it hard, make it feel like, well, I'm like one of those Old Testament people in, in the Bible where they called them tax collectors and sinners. And maybe you feel like one of those. But Jesus in that crowd, all those people were there, the righteous and the wicked, if you will, and Jesus felt pity, felt compassion, love, mercy for all of them. And that's the message I would like to leave with you today. God loves you. It really boils down to that. God loves you. And, and so you, that image you started with at the beginning of Mass, I don't know what you had in there, but the suggestions I made, I want you to know, I think they're all wrong. I don't think in any way, shape, or form that Jesus would have looked at what you were doing or look at what I was doing and walked away. I don't think he does that at all. I think Jesus stays. I don't think Jesus would have looked at you or I with disgust or anger, uh, anything like that. I think he would have looked at us with love and compassion. And I don't think Jesus would have written it down because Jesus isn't interested in revenge. That's not his business, if you will. So let me end with a more positive image in your mind. Let me just take one example of something that might have been in uh, the, the, the mind of one of you here. Picture, if you will, um, perhaps a, a teenager, an older adult perhaps, that they are thinking of the first time they saw pornography. And they're picturing Jesus walking in and seeing that. And it would be easy in that moment to think that Jesus is going to look with disgust at what's going on. It's easy to think that Jesus would turn around and leave. But as again, I don't think Jesus would do either of that. I suspect it's more likely that Jesus would indeed feel a great deal of love and compassion. And I would picture him sitting down next to, the, say, the young man, maybe putting an arm around him and saying to him, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that you saw this. I'm sorry that somebody thought it was okay to make this sort of thing and put it in a place where you could see it. I'm sorry you live in a fallen world, but I love you. I think that's what Jesus does. I think that's what Jesus would do in whatever scenario you, you had in your head. I think Jesus expresses in some way his love, his care, his compassion for you. And that is the message of our faith. Sure, Jesus cares about what we do. He tells us uh, lots and lots of things, and it is a narrow path. There's no doubt about it. But Jesus always starts with love. I love you. And because I love you, I hope you will do these things. But never, never forget that God always looks at you with love and mercy and compassion.